Hello and welcome to the 11th episode of Season 3 of the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. This is the 75th episode of the show and the 52nd regular episode. Today I'm joined by creative media consultant and educator Claudio Zavala Jr. to talk about tools that help us hear from our students in ways that empower them to be creative. We talk about the Adobe Spark tools as well as Adobe's Premiere Pro, Premiere Rush, Photoshop, Illustrator, Fresco, and Adobe Audition. You are going to learn about so many awesome digital creation tools. Let's dive in. Hi, I'm Batsheva Frankel from Overthrowing Education, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome to the Educational Duct Tape Podcast with Jake Miller. Welcome. Happy New Year. Greetings, duct tapers. For the returning listeners, welcome back. Thanks for joining me in the fourth calendar year of this show. And for our new friends who are fulfilling a New Year's resolution to listen to podcasts that help you learn about using technology as tools to empower more efficient and effective learning experiences, well, Maybe also fulfilling a New Year's resolution to listen to podcasts that make you smile and laugh. (laughs) You are in the right place. We're so glad to have you with us. As most of you already know, my name is Jake, and I'm here to talk to you about duct tape and educational technology and how, in my silly mind, the two of them go together to form an ed tech integration mindset that I think that you could use in your learning environments now. Speaking of what I'm here to do, I'm also here to talk to Claudio Zavala Jr., an educator and creative media consultant who is passionate about storytelling and empowering individuals, entrepreneurs, and small business owners to tell their stories and build their brands. As you'll soon find out, Claudio is a modern-day renaissance man, seriously, for real, who knows a lot about the use of a number of digital creation tools, and he's going to share that knowledge with all of us. How lucky are we? But before we get to all of Claudio's amazing knowledge, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Visor for Chromebooks. If you manage Chromebooks for a school or school district, you'll want to listen to this, especially if you're tracking those Chromebooks in spreadsheets. Visor for Chromebooks is a Chromebook management solution. It seamlessly integrates with the Google Admin Console and your student information system. With Visor for Chromebooks, you can easily see which student has which Chromebook, manage repairs, and automate processes for lost or stolen devices, such as notifying parents and remotely disabling the device. So ditch those spreadsheets, although I do love spreadsheets, (laughs) and do a Google search now for Visor for Chromebooks. That's V-I-Z-O-R for Chromebooks. Starting next week, I'm going to be popping some bonus content into your educational duct tape podcast feed on some of the off weeks from the show. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss them. Uh, Next week, I'll be sharing a roundtable discussion that I had with some of my favorite education podcasters. We'll be reflecting on educational technology in 2020 and where we see it going in 2021. When I share these bonus episodes, they'll typically be content from my guest appearances on other podcasts or content sources that I think will benefit you and that I'm hoping to shine a spotlight on. So make sure you're subscribed so that when I do stick them in the feed, you don't miss out on them. Speaking of shining spotlights, I'd also like to shine a spotlight on my willingness to support educators and answer your questions. I'm like that kid in your class who is super willing to let his classmates copy his answers on their test. Seriously, I put the work in to know as much as I can about educational technology, so why not give you the answers? (laughs) Okay, okay, don't give me a zero and send me to the principal's office. I'm not actually talking about cheating on tests here. I'm talking about answering your questions. If you've got a question that you'd like me to address on the show, tweet it to me, at Jake Miller Tech. Email it to me, jakemillertech at gmail.com or submit it on the show's Flipgrid, which is at flipgrid.com slash edu duct tape. However you do it, I'll pick one or two questions to ask at the tail end of each episode. Today, I've got one about Google Sheets and one about asynchronous activities, apps, and websites to use with elementary school students. If you want to ask a question, you could tweet it, direct message it, 
email it, or Flipgrid it. If you want to hear it in your own voice, use the Flipgrid option or send me an audio version. You know, Just use the voice notes on your iPhone or whatever, download that MP3 and send it right over to me and I'll pop it right in the show. Otherwise, if you send text, I'll just have Siri read it for us. And either way is fine. I just want to help you out and answer your question because as we tell our students, oftentimes if it's a question you have, chances are somebody else has the same question and why not enlighten everyone? with the answers that I'm able to provide when, of course, I am able to provide them. Okay, last thing before we get to Claudio is a preview of where I'll be over the next few months. My calendar doesn't look like it did a year ago, but I will say it looks a lot better than it did in the ta- the last half of 2020 when everything was canceled. Uh, I do have some things coming up that I'm excited about. Uh, a few days ago, we launched the eighth cohort of my virtual course called Best Practices and Tools for Learning in All Settings. The ninth cohort starts in March. You can get details at jakemiller.net slash KSU course 2020. And yes, I know it's not 2020 anymore. No, I don't want to go change that URL. It's just one too many tasks for me. So it is staying as jakemiller.net slash KSU course 2020. On January 16th, Meredith Akers, Amy Meyer, Kyle Nemus, Jonathan Spike, Steve Dembo, and I will be a part of Improv EdCon, hosted by my buddies Elizabeth and Daryl from Flippin' Good Tech. You can get details on that at flippingoodtech.com. It is going to be a great time. So wake up, get your Saturday coffee, join us as we play some silly games and share some uh, educational technology tips. Chances are, if you're a fan of this show and enjoy my silliness and the game, I play with guests and learning about educational technology at time. You are at the same time, I should say, you are going to love Improv EdCon and Elizabeth and Daryl are a blast. So I, I definitely think you should tune in. Uh, and again, the show link will be in the show notes for that. A week later after that, I will be keynoting the Fort Worth Technology Conference, which ironically is in today's guest Claudio's neck of the woods. Unfortunately, it's virtual, like the rest of these events, so Claudio and I can't meet up for a burger and a beverage, uh, but I am honored to be a part of that January 23rd event. Now, unfortunately, it's not virtual, but fortunately, uh, it is virtual, so that means Fort Worth has allowed is allowing anyone to join in on this, so a link will also be in the show notes there, uh, and you can jump on board uh, for that keynote and some of their sessions, too. I hope they're not going to be mad at me for saying that on the show, but I'll put a link to that in the show notes. On the following Saturday, after that, boy, I've got a lot of Saturday stuff coming up. Um, I'll be doing a Nearpod session for the ECOEA, that's the East Central Ohio Education Association, uh, but I'll be doing a Nearpod session at their Professional Development Day, also virtual. February has a bunch of stuff on the docket, but the ink isn't quite dry on those yet, so let's jump to March. In March, I am absolutely psyched to be doing two sessions in the virtual spring queue. April and May, after that, are open, but in June, I'm excited to be a part of WitCon and the Panhandle STEM Conference and a few other things that, again, the ink hasn't dried on yet. Uh, If you have an event coming up, I would love to be a part of it. Please reach out. Just head over to jakemiller.net slash speaking to see some speaking videos and to send me a message. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me just grab my soapbox from over here. Uh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, it's perfect. Climb up on there. It's become a Wednesday tradition of mine. Every Wednesday afternoon, I watch Fresh Air at 5. Fresh Air at 5 comes from friend of the show, Brian Carpenter, who you may remember from last spring when he talked about his beach body in one of the games that we played. Anyhow, Brian takes a 5 a.m. walk every day, hence Fresh Air at 5, and on his walk, he listens to a podcast. And I am so humbled and honored that Educational Duct Tape is one of the shows that he regularly tunes into on those morning strolls. I'm imagining Brian on his walk right now being like, hey! He's talking about me. At the end of the walk, Brian, I hope the scenery is wonderful wherever you're at right now. At the end of the walk, Brian records a short video reflection and uploads it to Twitter with the hashtag Fresh Air at Five. And as I mentioned, it's become a bit of a tradition for me to listen to it after the show comes out. So, Brian, I'm looking forward to today's. I'm thinking this one is going to be a bit meta as you're going to be reflecting on a soapbox where I'm reflecting on something that you said. Anyhow, in his fresh air at five from my recent episode with Nicole Taylor, Brian said something that got the gears turning in my brain. Here's the beginning of it. The list that Jake and Nicole Taylor gave us is long. 
and I would liken it to going to Home Depot to the tool section and you can see all of those different drills that you can buy and using all of them can't do it. Later in the video, Brian mentioned putting that drill in his tool belt, and that got me thinking. If we picture Tim the Toolman Taylor or his more capable sidekick, Al Borland, or Bob Vila walking around with a tool belt on, we realize that there is a finite amount of space in that tool belt. And if they overload it, they'll be unable to keep the tool belt up which could be quite embarrassing. I could totally see Tim the Tool Man loading his belt up with loads of hardware, letting out a arr, 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 and then the belt falling straight to the floor and taking his pants with them. Well, I, that would not happen to Al, and that would not happen to Bob Vila, but we could totally see it happening to Tim. Well, I think Brian would agree that the same might happen to teachers who overload their ed tech tool belt. They hopefully won't lose their pants, but <laughs> if your tool belt is weighed down by too many tools, you're certain to create a weight that you can't bear. And so we've got to be mindful of how many tools we select for our tool belts. Just like the guy from my late friend Sean's favorite show, This Old House. Sean used to get up in the morning uh, every weekend, pour a giant cup of coffee. Actually, not every weekend. Was it every day? Was that a daily show? Anyhow, he would get up, pour a giant cup of coffee, and watch an episode of This Old House. He was like a little old man. Anyhow, the guy in the show, he only needs one hammer, one tape measure, and one screwdriver in his tool belt. We, just like that, probably only need one formative assessment tool and one, I don't know, screen recorder and one lesson delivery tool in our proverbial ed tech tool belt. After all, we've got to be able to hold up the weight of the tool belt. We can, however, put different stuff in our tool belt depending on the tasks that we're about to do. Maybe you don't need a hammer. And maybe you don't need a screen recorder. Maybe this time you need a wrench and a pure feedback tool. And just like electricians put different stuff in their tool belts than carpenters do, you're likely to stock your belt with different tools than the teacher in the next room over. And that's okay. You're doing a different job or at least approaching it from a different perspective. When he was talking about those drills in Home Depot, Brian actually continued with some more insights. Check this out. Using all of them can't do it. I can't go to Home Depot and buy all those drills because I have no need for all those drills. But being aware of all those drills is really important. And as uh, educational learners, it's important for us to learn. So this particular part of what Brian had to say sent me off on a different tangent. I often say that you don't have to use all of the tools. But when I talk about the Dr. Maya Angelou quote, do the best you can until you know better, and then when you know better, do better, I often point out that part of knowing better is being aware of the tools. And this, my friends, is your big Craftsman 2000 series, 52-inch wide, 10-drawer rolling tool cabinet. Arr, 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 arr. <laughs> oh, that was that show. That's like my childhood right there. A good handyman or woman keeps a few tools handy in their belt, but also has some lesser used tools in their big tool chest. And then a longer list of tools that they're aware of, but they're at the local hardware store. Or maybe they're in their father-in-law's garage and they can borrow them if they need them, right? That's how I do it. Today, Claudio Zavala Jr. is going to tell us about a lot of tools. And folks, you can't fit them all in your tool belt. And you can't afford to buy all of them and put them in your tool chest either. So you've got to decide. Which ones do you leave on the shelf at Home Depot? You know what it is now, but you don't need to take it home. Which ones go into your tool chest? You know what they are. You plan to use them in the future, but not right now. And which ones, if any, go into your tool belt to be ready for action tomorrow? Bonus points, by the way, if you post on social media and tell us which tools are going into your tool belt, into your tool chest, and staying at Home Depot, or maybe your father-in-law's house. By the way, I don't mean to throw any shade in Lowe's direction. I just prefer the orange a aprons at Home Depot, okay? All right, be, be cool, Lowe's. <laughs> Does anybody know what time it is? Tool time! No, 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 it's not tool time. It's time to hear Brian's reaction to this segment in his next Fresh Air at Five. You guys are going to have to check it out. I'm going to put a link to uh, this Fresh Air at Five in the show notes. You'll go to it, you'll follow Brian, and you'll hear the upcoming Fresh Air at Five when he reflects on this one. Anyhow, it's also time to hear from today's guest, Claudio Zavala Jr. Today's guest. 
All right, today's guest is Claudio Zavala. Claudia is a creative media consultant based in the Dallas Fort Worth area. He is passionate about storytelling and empowering individuals, entrepreneurs, and small business owners to tell their stories and to build their brands. He is a YouTuber, avid photographer, and videographer, professional musician, a master woodworker, and a cyclist. He is a man of all skills. He's a <laughs> renaissance man, I think, Claudio. You could find Claudio on uh, social media at Claudio Zavala Jr. on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. You could also find them at his website, imclaudius.com or on his YouTube channel, I am Claudius. And you could check out all of the cool hardware Claudio uses and all those creations that he talks about there on kit.co slash I am Claudius. As usual, all of those links and everything are in the show notes. But here in the actual podcast in your earbuds is Claudio. Welcome in, man. Hey, how are you? Glad to be here. Yeah, I'm really good. I'm really excited to have you on. I've been admiring the creative work you've done over the years for a while, so I'm excited to get to share it with the listeners. Cool. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, so tell me how. So, reading that um, that bio there, I didn't directly say educator or teacher or anything like that in there. So, how? What's the backstory? How did you get connected to education? Because I know this is this is not your first foray into an education podcast or anything like that. Yeah. You're, you're, you know, you do ISTE and you do lots of speaking and events and you're on the podcasts and all that stuff. So what's, what's the connection between you being a creative media consultant and you being involved in education? So in, in you know, I've got 20, 20 plus years in, in education. So I've been in, in the classroom and uh, I, I still work in a school district, you know, working with the uh, uh, kind of we call it learning teams or so helping with the, the online piece of, of uh, schooling right now. We, mm -hmm. uh, we got the virtual, you know, we're in the virtual world right now. So, um, yeah. so in, in, in this, you know, the, the, the bio that I'm uh, reaching out to kind of opening up to kind of like reaching out beyond just education. You yeah. Know, I think, I think, um, education has the, my, my, I have to say my years in education have, have really honed in how, you know, people learn, uh, yeah. how, how not just, not just, uh, young learners, adults, you know, so we're all learners. We're, we're, you know, I would say, instead of saying we're all students, but we're all learners, we should, mm -hmm. we should continue learning the rest of our lives. But, you know, in, in that, my passion is that storytelling, helping others tell stories, whether, you know, it's, it's with students, um, you know, but individuals, so empowering individuals, whether it's a student, a teacher, administrator, um, a business owner, you know, someone's an entrepreneur, you know, so everybody's got a story to share. And, and sometimes they just don't know if they have the tools or the wherewithal or just the knowledge. How do I get my story out there? So that's kind of like my approach to that, that creative media consulting. And, and when yeah. people reach out to me and ask me, you know, Hey, you know, I've got, I got, I've got friends who are in real estate and say, you know, I, I love what you're doing. Help me, you know, how can you help me? What, what can, you know? And I said, uh, well, Hey, you have a story to tell you. It's just, it's, just yeah. it's a different, a little different story, but yeah. we're going to tell a different way. And, and, you know, they're the experts in what they know, but I was like, Hey, and everything that anyone does, there's always a story to tell. And, you know, in the classroom, there's, there's always a story to tell you, you know, mm. with your students, with the educators and, and with, with families, you know, that, that's, that's, that's the, the crux of what my, my passion is, is that storytelling piece and, and helping others, empowering them to, to, you know, give them the tools to, to help them create those stories and share those stories. Wow, that's cool. Because that, that, I mean, that's what a good teacher does, right? Is makes makes their learner feel comfortable and helps their learner get the information out of them, get the growth out of themselves, and to kind of express their own voice and become their own person, and you know, find as you said, their own story, and then kind of pivoting and doing that also with the things that are kind of your passion projects, right? With yes. the with the the video creation and the and the media um the media media work and kind of combining your skills as an educator and your your keen eye for that kind of work. That's good. That's cool how you've really like, owned in on what your skills are and your passions are and kind of combined them in an interesting way. I like that a lot. Yeah, I, call, I, I say it's, it's you know, I've, I've done years, you know, I've been a musician for 30 plus years and you know, I've done video for so many years and photography and you know, I've been in education for so many years. And, and it's like right now, it's like all the skills that I've learned, you, you know, it's funny that you said the Renaissance, man, I've had people. Mm call me that. And I, yeah. I don't use it myself. I don't like saying it, but, but it is, you know, it's just all these different, you know, I've, I've, I've been working for 30 plus years too. It just, wow. I did it in high school and I just still do it um, and, and being the musician and all. So all those things, you know, the, the creative part of it and, and having to figure out how much wood do I need to buy to build this, this little 
table, you know, yeah. and measuring it. Is it going to fit where, where I want it to go? And then in, in music, is it thinking, you know, the math piece of it and the, the yeah. writing some pieces and, and figuring out how these rhythms and patterns go. And, and with all that, and then all, everything is kind of like just merged together, kind of just yeah. together perfectly. I was like, you know what, I've, I've got all this and it's really helped to where I'm at right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what I'm thinking about right now, Claudio, by the time everybody's listening to this, it's after Christmas, but we're recording it before Christmas. And I'm currently not currently as we record, like it's not, it's not taking up my mind power as I'm recording, but normally at this time I'm stressing out about what I'm going to get my wife for Christmas. Uh And I'm like, I could, I could buy her something or I could teach her how to use something in Google (laughs) or I could, I could teach her some math or some science. That's, That's all I, or I can record her a podcast or I can make her a gift. You, Claudio, could write a song or make a video, right? Or <laughs> <laughs> build a table, or, the, or or ride a bike to her. I don't, that, that, that's not as, as big a yeah. one there. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is, and, and it probably is not something that she wants. <laughs> I'll get it all wrong. <laughs> Actually, my wife, if I was like, "Honey, I'm going to go out for a 30 mile bike ride and leave you alone for a while," she'd be like, "Oh, okay, I'll take it. That's a pretty good yeah, gift." Yeah, that's probably. <laughs> so like, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. That sounds good. <laughs> that's right. Go take the kids with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. It won't be 30 miles anymore, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, even though we're, we're giggling, let's, let's play a game. You up for a game, sure, Claudio? Sure. Yes, let's do it. Two truths and one lie. Okay. So we're going to play a game of two truths and one lie. You're going to give me three statements. Two are going to be true. One's going to be a lie. I'm going to try to guess your lie. It's going to be really hard because with all of these different interests and talents you have, I'm going to be led to believe just about yeah. anything you say here. And I, and I so try. It's going to be tough for me. Yeah, and I and I try to to think of the things you know. So, so you want me to read them all through all all three or one at a time? All three. So go all go. go all three. Yeah. All right. So here we go. Um, <clears throat> okay. So um, you can find me, or I should say, you can find my name in the credits of five recording albums. Wow. Okay. Prior to teaching, I worked as a firefighter. EMT. Okay. What was the last part there? Uh, EMT, so the paramedic. EMT, okay. And I can juggle three objects at a time. And if it's an apple, if they're apples, I can actually bite them as well as I'm juggling. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> if that's true, then you got to add that to your bio. That has to be on your bio. <laughs> Take out cyclist and put in juggle three apples and apples. eat them as, as you're doing. <laughs> So those, are the, those are the uh, the three there. So. Those are the three. Okay, so name in the credits of five albums, which seems very believable. Uh, Firefighter EMT, which would be awesome if it was true. I'm I'm guessing, like like I said, who knows, Claudio, with you, if you could have been involved in that work. Um, I somehow I believe the juggling more than I believe the the firefighter EMT one. So I think. I think you were not before being an educator. You were not a firefighter or EMT, and that is true. <laughs> that's true. Okay, that's, that, I, I should say you got it right. That's the that that's is the, true. That is true that that's false, right? Yeah, that's that's <laughs> the lie. There. Yeah, you play this game about as well as I do. Yeah, buddy. yeah. I so, no, so <laughs> it, it, I would say it's it's a lie because actually I was actually going to be an EMT firefighter before ah. the teacher. I actually was took all the courses, and I was I just didn't take fire academy. And wow! Just, so you were you were almost there, huh? Almost there. So I I just decided to switch at wow. some point. Yeah. Well, so, we're glad you we're glad you did because yeah. because of what you've blessed us with as an educator and in this creative media work. But I want to hear about the juggling. So so th- so what does it look like to juggle three apples and take a bite? This is not a video podcast. Yeah, so yeah. So pretend, let's pretend you're doing it right now. Yeah, well. So- there he goes. Three yeah, apples. So the, the, the three, the three, you know, I can start off with baseballs and tennis balls, which is easy, you know, so uh, two in one hand, one as in you. one. you. <laughs> flip, flip up, the, you know, from from one hand with two, usually it's my left hand. I'll flip one up and then I'll just toss the one from the right hand and then it just starts like a little cir- cycle. But with the apples, it just has to time it right as it's coming down. I'll take a bite out of it and then flip it back up and Usually I'll try to do the same apple, but uh, it's been a long time since I since I did the apples. But I, you know, at one point I was like juggling, and I think the family said, "Stop messing up with all the food," you know. So stop, <laughs> stop. You know, we, the rest of us want to eat. As right, so stop, right? Stop <laughs> eating the apples, man. <laughs> you can't take a bite of all three so, of them. <laughs> and it, you know, it helps that they're 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 softer apples, not you know the the harder ones. That there's a little more challenging and a little smaller too. So. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I, one of these days I'll have to do a video and post it. <laughs> yeah, you will. And you're even an apple juggling connoisseur. You know which apples are best for juggling. <laughs> I can, Claudio, I can juggle one apple <laughs> and take a bite out of it. Yeah. And, and I don't do anything with blades or anything. I just, just right. because I enjoy my being able to, to type and, and use right. the camera. Type. Use your fingers, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, what about apples that are on fire? Have you thought about trying that? No, no apples on fire yet, or, or dipped into anything and caramel, <laughs> caramel, or anything like that. And just not, haven't haven't gone that far, ventured that far. <laughs> anything larger than that probably won't work. So, okay, no, you're not. You don't do like pumpkins around Halloween no time, pumpkins or anything? right? Now, no pumpkins or you know any, any like yeah melons or anything like that. Uh, I see those jackfruits out there. I don't know if those are those would be. I don't think I'd be able to jug three of those. I think it's called you, or, or, jackfruit. or take or take a bite out of it while you're going about it. it. Yeah, <laughs> jackfruit. We saw one the other day. It's interesting. It's like wow. yeah, I've never I've never had jackfruit. Have you yeah. tried it before? I've not. It's just yeah. it's tempting, but I think every time we pass by it, we like mm, uh, let's just go with the oranges. Oranges. Yeah. <laughs> I know what this thing is. <laughs> yes. Right, I'm going to get that. <laughs> and then on on five albums, uh, what were were you as a a uh, musician on all five of them or, yes. or part of the team. Okay, cool. Yeah, and where did you play? So it, it was, um, so I'm, I'm going, I'm going way back. So, so I grew up playing gospel music. My dad was a musician. My dad was a musician as well. He played this, um, as a, I would say it's kind of a, the genre. So, you know, it's, it was a Spanish kind of rock, not like rock and but it is now, but kind of like 50 right. style rock and grew up that playing that. And, but, you know, I grew up in, in playing in church. That's where I grew up playing drums so gospel music was kind of like my my start and so for many years i played gospel music and um i am on uh, a couple of gospel albums playing percussion wow and uh i am on some other smaller projects playing some uh kind of mainly percussion on those albums so like like chimes and shakers and and uh, some uh triangles per cut you know congas and things like that so uh yeah so it's pretty neat to have like the uh, you know i've got all the albums once i just got them stored away you know it's like hey there's my name right there so yeah. got five albums so um nice. yeah, so that's pretty cool um uh, so that's kind of like, I guess, my my claim to fame. There's a yeah. five, five albums my name. That's <laughs> really cool. Four, right? <laughs> Do you can you guess how many uh, albums my name is on? <laughs> uh, I, what? It's it's zero unless zero. you unless you count the other Jake Miller who's who's a pop singer. Oh. It's funny. I don't know if you're right. Every now and then somebody tags me on Twitter as a, at Jake Miller, and I'm at Jake Miller Tech. At Jake Miller is is a uh, wealthy oh. and famous for the for the for teen girls singer. Uh, and you go to his profile, he's always got his shirt off. I fortunately always have my shirt on. So I am on zero albums oh, and gosh. there's zero posters of me hanging up in teen, teenage <laughs> girls' bedrooms. Too. Oh, goodness. That's funny. <laughs> well, you beat me there, Claudio. Oh. <laughs> oh man! So now that we've had a little bit of fun, Claudio, we're going to get into a educational duct tape question. So yeah. for anybody out there that might be a, a new listener, educational duct tape is my uh, goofy metaphor and ed tech integration mindset that says that educational technology is always at its best when we're using it as a tool uh, to solve a problem or meet a goal in a classroom or in a learning setting. So when we start off not saying what technology should I use today, but saying as a teacher, this is what I'm trying to do. This is the problem I'm trying to solve. This is what I'm trying to achieve. And then educational technology, just like some duct tape, uh, steps in and fills in as a tool. Nice. So with all of your creativity and self-expression that we've already discussed, I thought a perfect question for you would be, how can I hear from all of my students? So what are your tips for hearing from all your students or what are your favorite tools for that? So wh one of the things, you know, we I touched a little bit on it earlier as far as, you know, you know, everyone has got a story to tell. And, and you know, I think for, you know, when I started teaching, I'll just kind of go back a little bit when I started teaching you know, and, and it was just because that's the way you were trained That's you know, you were trained here. So, you know, you, you direct the discussion and, and for the most part, as my earlier years in teaching say, you know, I did a lot of the talking, you know, because that's just the way, you know, we were taught and trained. And, yeah. and so in the years that I've been out of the classroom, kind of working with educators and, you know, the, 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 I would say, I don't know if it's a paradigm shift, but, you know, I think it's a right shift where, you know, we're, we're, 
the students, we, we give them opportunity to share their voice to talk in class. Because, you know, they said that I think it's that there's a that saying, you know, that whoever does most talking is actually doing most of the learning. So, yeah. you know, we want to give those the students that opportunity to talk. So now, in, in in hearing the students, you know, there there's so many opportunities and ways that we can hear our students, and you know. Um, when we, when we say here, you know, we're always thinking, you know, orally or, or, um, we even, even, uh, traditionally, you know, write a book report or, you know, write an essay, right. which I hated writing essays, just, but, you know, sp- Spanish was my first language. And, you know, so I learned English at an early age. It's not so much that I don't have a command of the language, but I just, it wasn't my forte, but, you know, I did it, you know, I got the grade. Yeah. I think now, you know, we're in, a, we're in a spot where, you know, we've got so much technology around us where we can grab from different tools to be able to hear the students and finding the ways, you know, to take those traditional assignments, take those traditional things that we usually do mm-hmm. and it gives, you know, hey, how do you want to show me that you understand the story or what we're talking about? So, yeah, you know, hey, well, let me, uh, I'll, I'll use, for example, my daughter, um, my my daughter's love. She's a great artist, and I don't say it because she's my daughter. I do say it because she's my daughter, but at the same time, like she's, I'm like, holy cow, she's amazing. Right. I mean, my wife and I both draw, but not not like her. She's she's the blending of colors. That she's just wow. gifted. Wow. And so she was working on this assignment. I said, oh, what are you doing for art? Because it's just a you know we know she brings. She's got these little canvases or mini canvases she brings home. She's like, oh oh, you got another art project? Oh no, this is actually for. For English, we just finished reading. Um, oh God, was it Scarlet Letter? No, oh, so the Crucible. They just finished. Mm-hmm. They just read the Crucible, and the teacher said, hey, "Show me. You know, you, you guys can create anything to show me your, you know, your, you know, your understanding, yeah, your mastery of it, your understanding." Yeah. yeah. And so she created a, a, an art piece for. Wow. Uh, so she she painted it. It was uh, the house, and she painted the one of the characters, and she used the color the red the color red and the house and I, I and I said, you know what, what, what does that say? And she said, well, this, that's 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 the puppeteer, you know, the puppeteer, and so that was my representation, you know, of the story, you know, the playing, was pulling all the strings. Wow. Like, oh, cool. So, yeah. you know that 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 no that that was done on canvas. That was done with paper, which you know, I not anti paper man. I I use oh, yeah. sticky notes all the time. I'm a still a huge paper person, but you know we this that's just one way that we can hear right. a student. So in thinking of all the different tools that are available out there, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I love the Adobe tools. I've been using Adobe tools for so many years and Photoshop, which, you know, you manipulate pictures and, and I've been using like premiere pro, which is like a, a high end video editing tool. But one of the things that I've, I've enjoyed about what Adobe has been doing in the last years that I've been kind of doing some partner projects with them is just how much they've, expanded on tools to to bring these high end tools and and features and and package them into these, these tools to make them accessible for just anyone and mm-hmm. you know so I'm, and mainly what I'm talking about is like Adobe the Adobe Spark tools you know the, mm-hmm. the Adobe Spark post a page and, and video which in in and of themselves are so you can do so much with those and with with Spark Post, you know, one of the things I love about Spark Post is you can kind of integrate kind of now they have animation that you can add in, in, in the uh, on the web version of it. You know, so if, you, if you're on a Chromebook, which, which is really nice if you're using if you're a Chromebook district and maybe you don't have uh, iOS devices or you are a district that has iOS devices, you can use the apps. But one of the things I enjoy about Spark Post is they've taken some of the features that mainly are like on the mobile device and now you can do them on the web, which is like the animation piece and, and, you know, the students creating a, a, a graphic and adding their text to that, they can animate that text. So, you know, in essence, kind of, they're kind of getting, getting in that first stages of kind of video kind of animation, but, you know, going back to the, the, the crux of the questions, they hear the students, you know, so if, if a student wants to create a video to share their, their story, you know, um, I'm just going to go thinking of kind of a social studies project they've been maybe working on, you know, back in the day, it was like, Hey, memorize all the States and all the capitals. Well, I guess that really wasn't like, you know, so I learned the States and the capitals, but you right. know, maybe what were some of the things that were happening in the state, you know, that, that, you know, 
events or just big, big things in, that made you know huge impacts in, in people's lives or things that needed to change to happen. So maybe, you know, well, I want to create a short little video about that. Mm-hmm. And I want, you know, I want to tell it kind of in a video narration or maybe even doing like a, you know, I'll make my own kind of say maybe something I would post on social media. Maybe I'm telling the story of birds, like from a first person perspective, maybe I, maybe if I was, you know, and I'm just going to choose a battle of Gettysburg. If I was there kind of doing a, um, maybe a news uh, report yeah. of it, you know, I can do it from a per- first person view, but actually kind of like in that, you know, using like spark video, I can put something together just really quick and take some screenshots or draw something and import it in. And I could just create a, a video to share, you know, that project to talk about that. Um, if I'm kind of like a musician or, or an artist and, you know, I, I can use other tools that, you know, Adobe has out there, like Adobe Audition, which are kind of higher, um, and, you know, tools, but there's tools out there that you can use to edit audio and kind of create your own music tracks. And they've brought this, this past, um, you, you mentioned like Christmas, uh, this going to come out later yeah. in, in January, but this past uh, October, the Adobe Max Day released a ton of apps that you can on mobile device, like, mm like illustrator, which usually is one that you would use on desktop. And now you can use it on like an iPhone. Uh, I think it's on the iPhone. Yeah. Oh, iPhone okay. and iPad. And so you can pretty much create on the go. And if you're an illustrator, if you're, if your students an artist, and I mean, um, they got their own phone. Um, you know, I think it's on iOS at the moment now, but you know, they can download the app and, and illustrate fresco is another cool app that's available on, on, on devices as well. And fresco is kind of like, if you think of the word fresco, you know, like a, like a fresco painting mm-hmm. kind of like an uh, art tool, you know, a, an art app. So basically uh, my daughter takes my iPad and say, Hey, can I go, can I use your iPad to draw? And say, yeah, go ahead, take it. Um, so that if you have a student and that's how they share their voice and they're illustrating or they're drawing, they're painting. And, and I'm, you know, saying Adobe just because those are some of the tools that I know, but there's a ton of tools out there. Oh, yeah. You know, you, you know, that it's, I'm not saying you have to use that one specific tool. It's just just kind of just mentioning the ones that I know of. Um, yeah. You know, and then if the students that are kind of getting into kind of more, they, they want maybe, you know, I mentioned Adobe Spark, which is, is great and, and video and, and page. You know, if, it, if someone is kind of doing some journaling, if they want to, um, you know, I mentioned, you know, doing the book report, doing the essay, it's on paper, but Hey, why not create kind of a, a page, a web page that kind of document what you're learning. You, know, you can create a portfolio, you know, take that essay and convert it, kind of make it a digital yeah. version with that spark page. You have video in there. You can integrate images in there. You got text. So you can create something animated outside and bring it in as a, as a, as a video, just, the, I would say just almost the sky's the limit, pretty much what you want to yeah. share on that kind of a kind of like that web version of something that you're sharing a story. And, right. you know, if you're, if you are, if you got some students that are getting into like video, you know, YouTube is, is, is huge, you know, with, with young learners, man, it's, it, YouTube has made some changes as far as how people can make their money and monetize and things like that. But it doesn't, it doesn't hinder, you know, from a student to go jump right. on. And, it's still such a huge part of their world. Oh, yeah. Right. And, and yeah. you know, I mean, I've know uh, of, of people that have their channel and a ton of subscribers and, and mm-hmm. having this subscriber doesn't mean that that's more value. I'm just saying that they just have a huge following and right. what they're sharing, you know, if it's there, some of them are just kind of doing vlogging and sharing their stories. And so with, with if a student is kind of into doing that, using tools like Adobe Premiere uh, Rush, which was Adobe's way of, of, of creating a tool really focused. Their focus was YouTubers and, and young, younger learners, you know, they're really um, school age students, mm. I would say children or kids um, not to say that adults can't use it, but that was kind of like the mark. They were marketing it for that. And I mean, that's, I use it a ton to really get a, a, when I want to do a little more in my video than spark video can give me, you know, yeah. maybe some layered content, but that's something I can jump in. And so that's create. like a step between spark video and yeah, Premiere Pro, and that's Premiere Pro is kind of like an in between. And, and one of the great things now that um, they made a lot, a lot of it more, you say you can download it. It's free to download and you can, you can do 
a ton of it. There's some kind of things where you, you have to be to subscribe to it, but to open up some, some of the features or some of the extras that are in there, but you can do a ton without having to be subscribed to it. Um, but if you are getting to video, if, if that's something you're in, I, I, I totally recommend like if you, I recommend getting a subscription for it. Cause that that's gonna, just going to open up a lot more what you can do with it as far as yeah. uh, accessing content, like, like, uh, I would say motion graphics and things like that. I, but what's one thing, one thing I love about all of these, all of these things that you're, you're showcasing here is they go, they go above and beyond just hearing from our students. So we could use a tool like, like you and I both are, are Flipgrid heads. We both yeah. love Flipgrid, yeah. right? And, and it's a fantastic tool and it allows for quite a bit of creativity now too. But even years ago, before you could be really, truly creative in there and it really just it was just a re- recording tool, like that's hearing from your students, right? Yeah. And then like, Screencastify has their Screencastify submit where you could easily collect recordings from students. And those are fantastic. And those have our, their places in our classroom. Oh, yes. But you're taking it even a step beyond there and saying, OK, not only do I want to hear from my students, but I want my students to be excited about what they're making. I want my students to be uh, I'm using my air quotes here, speaking yeah. in a voice that is most most of their own. Right. So not, not, not literally literally their voice, but maybe it's art, maybe it's music, maybe it's video, yeah. maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a text post. And you're so you're giving them that opportunity to showcase their learning in a way that best fits them. And this benefits everybody, right? This benefits the teacher because things are more engaging for them to look at. Benefits the teacher because they're more likely to get quality information about their students learning, right? If I ask, if I ask all of my students to draw a picture of something, some of them are not going to give me a good picture of what they know because they're not great artists. Your daughter is going to knock it out of the park and I'm going to know exactly her level of understanding. So that other kid should get to make a video or make a post or something like that. So I'm getting a better measurement of student understanding and we're tapping into a, a student's flow, right? Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know if you know the work of, uh, Mi- uh, I'm going to butcher his name because it's such a complicated name. Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Have you heard of this? Uh, the psychologist Daniel Pink references him regularly. Yeah, I think so. Uh, talks about the science of flow, which is when we start doing something and we lose track of time while we're doing it. We're so excited about what we're doing. And, Every now and then we tap on something that that gives that to our students. And your daughter probably had yeah. that when she made that art project. And you have it when you're doing your woodworking, right? Yeah. And I'm, yeah. I have it when I'm making a GIF. And if we can give our students that opportunity on a project, that's huge. Plus, it, it really empowers them to to truly show their comprehension for something and to get a really deep level of understanding about it because they're excited about the project they're making the product i should say not project the product that they're creating right yeah absolutely and and i think you hit on that 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 zone or that you know where where they're lost in the creation of it and in the working of you know um i went i'm going back to talking about you know if i'm writing an essay it's it's almost like pulling teeth sometimes and it's like and the student may say, oh, that's just too much work, but it's like, okay, well write a script, mm-hmm. write a script for, and, and sometimes, and it's not because you want to do more work, but be, they get so into it that, you know, it's like, oh man, I'm going to write the script. Oh, well now we got to work on the lighting, how we're going to do the lighting in the, for this video. And how, you know, well now we got the audio, but at the same time, you know, then, then you bring in some of those collaboration parts into it then you that that problem solving part into it that you know like that the creativity into this project where in the beginning was just like well i'm just gonna write an essay but now it's like yeah. man we're we're working together on this project you know hey i'm I'm writing the the, the script for it you're the video person you know in the in the class you know hey want, you want to work on this project together yeah okay so i'm gonna work on the script let's, let's kind of talk about it i'm gonna write it but you're the video person you know the best way that we can get the shot and then you know you got this other one this other student over here well maybe i can kind of draw some backgrounds that we can use kind of like, you know, if we're doing a green screen or something like that. So then, you know, so now, you know, you're hearing from a m- multiple students working on a project where it's like, you know, then you have different types of kind of projects that are being turned in instead of, you know, having 30 something of the same thing. I was like, mm. well, Hey man, that's pretty interesting. You know, like going right. back to the example of my daughter's teacher, well, you created a really neat art representation of what we were studying. And this person over here wrote a poem and, and, yeah. You know, this person wrote a song and they just printed a little, little, create a little graphic, an animated graphic or, you know, just so many, so many ways that you, it's, it's basically opening up that, that opportunity for students to share the voice and, and, and for us to be able to like, Hey, you know, show me what you know. And, and, but letting them to choose from all the different tools that are out there, 
and some, like you said, that, that they can just kind of dive into it and get lost to it, into it. And before they know, I was like, oh man, I don't want to go home. I got to finish this or I want to get home so I can finish it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and you're, and you're tapping into like all four C's there with what you're talking about, right? They're, yeah. they're doing, they're doing some critical, critical thinking in there. They're doing some creative thinking. They're collaborating. Like you give some great examples of them collaborating on a project there. And the other piece too, is you talked about those essays that maybe you struggled with when you were in school. And I think part of the reason you probably struggled was because you just didn't want to do it, right? <laughs> yeah. You knew the content and you knew how to write. And, you know, like, like you were saying, the English language might have been a struggle for you at first, but you were capable of doing it, yeah. but you didn't feel passionate about doing it, right? Exactly. It, meanwhile, if you were a student, if, if, if this was young Claudio and your assignment was to record a fake newscast about a topic, you might be like, well, I've never done that before, but I'm going to figure this out, yeah. right? I'm motivated yeah. to figure it out. Uh, and then the other piece here is imagine you write those essays and you want the students to learn from each other. And you're like, all right, everybody, let's read each other's essays. And the kids are like, <laughs> I don't want to read their essays. Right. But in your, in your daughter's class, if you're like, let's read each other's poems and look at each other's drawings and listen to each other's songs and watch each other's videos, yeah, yeah. the kids are much more likely to be excited about that. Yeah. And, and now we're we're hearing from all of our students we're assessing their understanding of something. We're giving them a, a voice and a platform and an opportunity to learn some life skills there. We're tapping into the four C's and we're amplifying their voice for each other, right? And, and we're helping them also develop some skills that they might use out there in, in real life. Like you said oh, yeah. about how, how big it can be to be a YouTuber. Oh, yeah. These oh, things yeah. are immensely relevant for these kids. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that that's the, the all that just opens up the opportunity for those, like you mentioned, the four C's, all yeah. that opens up and, and, and almost unintentionally, you know, intent, intentionally, unintentionally, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense there, but right. oh yeah, I, it's, it's just, I think at the time, you know, we, the accessibility of, we have got a lot of tools that are, that are out there. And I would say sometimes, you know, it's a pocket full of creativity you have, yeah. you know, you have, you have that, you know, I, I think of that what song, a pocket full of kryptonite, but this is a pocket full of creativity. Right. You, know, you, you got that in your hand and, and, and you know, it's just a potential and, you know, it's in it. So in a way, you know, letting the students know, kind of direct showing them, you know, this, that you have this device, but at the same mm -hmm. time, it's like, you know, we, we sometimes we tend to, I think, generalize that, oh, they, they'll figure, they know how, but it's like, you know, there's times where, you know, I, I mentioned all these tools. Well, you know, you can't just say, Hey, go use, go use spark, but you, right. know, you, gotta, you do, you have to take the time to just show them, you know, how to, how to kind of start with it. And, and once they kind of got the basics, then, you know, it's very, one of the things I love about all these tools that I mentioned, they're very intuitive. So, you know, there's, there's so many ways to do the same thing and you know, the other a while back, someone showed me how to do something like, Oh my God, I didn't know that you can do it that way. Mm -hmm. You just saved me hours right. of time. You yeah. just gave back like two hours of my life. Every time I edit a video, I was like, Holy cow. That's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. That's great to hear. Yeah. Um, so while we were talking about it, I, I kind of started categorizing uh, those Adobe tools you were talking about. So yeah. uh, under video tools, and, and for those people listening, I, I'll, I'll have them in the show notes kind of in these categories. Um, under video tools, we've got um, kind of the most basic and, and by most basic, I mean, uh, easiest to use. The, yeah. the, the product doesn't look basic. The product looks very slick and very nice. But the, the easiest to use is Spark Video. Yes. Uh, the notch above that you said is Premiere Rush. And is, is Rush on, is that on mobile only or is that on PC only or is it both? It's on PC, you know, so Mac Windows, and then um, it's on Android and iOS. Oh, great. Okay, um, so ac across, and it would work yeah. on Chromebooks too? or No, not? Chromebook, yeah. And, and, and I say, I don't say, I say it, not that I've heard, but it's like, I know that's one of the big things I always say, man, if you can bring a web version of it. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a wish. And, and does Spark work on all platforms? Spark. Yes. Yeah. Um, Spark on iOS, Spark video on iOS. I know yeah. you can, you can do it on, on the um, Mac or PC and then Chromebook. I don't, don't think it's available on an Android yet. The, uh, okay. the actual app itself. I'm going to put that in the show notes and, I, and we'll, I'll double check that. Yeah. Yeah. For it, just, in, just in case we find otherwise. And then, so the next step up from Rush is Premiere Pro, and that's yeah. the high end. That's yeah. that's Adobe's answer to a, a tool like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker. They've all got their own tools, but that's that's the high end one, and that is 
Windows and Mac. Is that it, right? Yeah, Windows and Mac. Yeah, this, so it's it's like the super intensive one, and and you know that's there's there's several out there that are kind of like your Hollywood standard. So this this is like the Hollywood standard, but a lot of small production companies use it, and, mm-hmm. and there's some c- other competitors out there. That's my main video editing tool that I use for for editing my videos and. You know, I do a lot of Rush because I can do that on my phone mm-hmm. and I can hop on between. One of the nice things about Rush is you can hop on between the your uh, desktop and mobile. So, you know, it's like, oh, let's go. We're going to go have dinner. Okay. In between while I'm waiting for the, the food to come, I can work on a little video. <laughs> you know, it doesn't always make the family happy. But right. like, I was going to laugh at Let me do a quick edit. <laughs> Because it's on my mind, but Dad, one put, of the, your, put your phone away, Dad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Dad. One of the cool things about Rush and Premiere Pro is so if you start a project, like if you're doing the desktop, well, you can start on your phone, mm-hmm. Premiere Rush, and then you can go on the desktop version of Premiere Rush and kind of tweak it some more. But then you're like, oh, I need to, I need to add this, but I, I can't do it in Rush. Well, you can open up Premiere Pro and you can actually open up a Rush project in Premiere oh. Pro and 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 continue editing it. it you just can't it's not backwards compatible so you can't right. open a rut you can't open a premiere pro project in rush so which makes sense you, you can't go from the from the higher end tool yeah, and yeah. then take that project down to the lower end yeah. tool but it makes sense to go from from the, well, yeah. I'm gonna make sure with that yeah those are, those are just those are some great great tools and and you know does some some new updates that are coming soon which i'm excited about premiere pro where they can be able to uh do the captioning like within the the software oh, itself, which that's is that's huge, yeah. Huge. And then Rush just added some updates with kind of uh, graphics, and they partnered with a company called Splice to do uh, to provide more soundtracks and sound mm. effects and and loops, which are really neat. So it opens up like just the world of creativity, what you can do. Uh, uh, really neat and and really good sounding effects. And I was kind of like, oh, these are good. Yeah, uh, much better, much I mean, much improved of what was there before. Yeah. So in terms of like ages of, st- of learners using these tools, yeah. assuming, assuming that we've got, per- you know, all the permission and everything in line, yeah. to use them. I would say that spark could go as low as uh, pr- maybe even primary grades. Would, yeah. Would I mean, that? they, I know that when they, if you set sign up for like the spark for edu, I mean, it's K 12 yeah. set, set up for K 12. So, I mean, if you can, you know, the, the spark video and just uh, my wife teaches kinder. So I would have to, you know, I, I, I would say they could probably do some spark video. Um, yeah. You know, just, it's probably one of those things where you do a little more, there's probably a little more training with them right. showing them how, but um, I would say, yeah, I'd probably, I mean, people that are listening or maybe K people are like, no, you're crazy, yeah, Claudia. Right. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I'm, I'm thinking, yeah, you know, spark video and, and a little bit of, um, you know, just the spelling piece, maybe, maybe yeah, right, a little right. challenging, but you know, if they can partner with a, a, a uh, that's a good partner, idea. Yeah. You know, do a little partnership, but uh, it's definitely one of those things. And, and uh, I know with spark, um, is it spark P- post, you can actually like invite and kind of do collaboration between yeah. projects, which is really neat. And then spark page too. I think you can invite, you can do some collaboration as well. So, you know, this, I, I would say, you know, just I guess it all depends on your your students. You know, if you if you have some case K, right. kindergarten students, like oh yeah, my kids can do that. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and, I, I think it's probably it's probably very realistic in like second grade or something yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Kindergarten yeah. first, I think you're right. Most students could probably do it with some more extensive support yeah. and training, but yeah. th- there's a chance that it might be too early yeah. for kids. Premiere Pro then would be for the most part high schoolers, maybe middle school and stuff maybe like that. Middle school, yeah, it just depends. It depends on the you know we we have some CTE courses <laughs> here, like your 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 um, design courses. So if you have some middle school courses that are you know they maybe maybe Rush would be a good kind of uh you know I would say Rush is kind of like third fourth maybe yeah. start you know and it, that one I say all the way to high school I mean yeah even even college and you know, that's you because you're learning the structure of you know how to put a story together a, a video and I would say you know Premiere Pro yeah definitely high school yeah and just depends maybe if you know just depends on how the school you know if it's one of those schools where hey we're, we're like a design you know like mm-hmm. a or we're a media art school, then, you know, yeah, they're, they're, they're doing it from six on up. I guess right. it just depends, you know? Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Now, what about um, pricing with those three tools? So the Spark tools are, are free. There are sometimes like some effects in there and stuff like that. If you're if you're on a, uh, a personal account, you can't use. Uh, but on an EDU account, it's all free. Is that right? Yeah, EDU Spark Spark is all free for K K twelve. I think even a higher ed too as well. I think it's it's all free. So you get you get uh, the premium. So with, with the premium features are things like you can add your like branding hmm. to um, your story. So, and I think that's one of the great, great ways to kind of, in fact, the, the hearing your student is, is also you know, building their, their, their brand, you know, yeah. I mean, we all have a story to tell. We all have our, you know, identity. So with that spark, with the spark EDU, you know, they have the opportunity to, you know, Hey, I'm going to create my own little logo. Oh, I'm going to create my yeah. own little signature. And when I create my story, I'm going to stamp my story. <laughs> you know, that's, I love that. that's got, you know, and, and I think that's, that's great. So it opens up though that opportunity. And then there's some, like some other tech, like fonts that you have access to. And I think the collaboration piece is part of it, the, the, the premium. So if you're using the free, the, you can do a ton with the free. So if you're a teacher and maybe you don't have the, the EDU, but you can sign up for the free, you do, you'll just have that kind of like the logo. Like when you download a project, you may have the Adobe Spark mm-hmm. kind of like the branding or some piece. Like when you create a graphic, uh, I think it's, uh, I want to say it's like nine ninety nine a month or something like that. If you want like sign up for yourself, a premium. Mm-hmm. Um, and if, and if you're doing it for a lot of a lot of a lot of work, you know, it's it's yeah, by you, by all means. If you're doing a ton of work, yeah, definitely recommend it. You know, if, if it's something, it's and, and you know, if you're not, uh, I, I don't, know, I I know I've heard this phrase, but I don't know who, uh, credit who created it. But the ed, if you're an edupreneur, I think yeah. I've heard that term around. You know, yeah, um, the doc, Doctor Will, I think, throws that Dr. around. Will, the world. Okay, Houston guy, yeah, I think. Doctor, I think that, yeah, it, you know, if you, and it's something one of the things where you are kind of building your, you know. You're, you're teaching, but you know, we all say we have that side hustle. You're doing, you know, you, you're, you're creating, sharing content. You're, yeah. you know, if you're doing something like that, then dad, yeah, definitely, definitely it's a good investment. And, yeah. you know, the, the rush is free to download as well. And you can download it free on the desktop too. And I think some, some of the features are kind of hidden behind that premium. You know, you sign up for it. I honestly don't remember what, what rush, what the cost for rush is or, or even Premiere Pro. I was poking around and I think I think it looks like Rush is is ten dollars a month or okay. for twenty dollars a month it's Rush and Premiere Pro. Oh, okay. But I'm not I'm not don't quote me on that, yeah, guys. Yeah. But, and I think but, I think too, if you're if you're an educator, like so if you wanna get you know, I see you we have we also have the visual tools. So if you have Photoshop, if you wanna like bundle, I think they have a whole like they have an educator pricing you know so if you decide hey i want to try this out you know you can get the educator pricing like bundled for ev- like mm-hmm. everything the whole creative cloud thing and yeah the creative cloud yeah. yeah yeah well let's let's take that that segue to over to visual tools then. Yeah. So, so in the visual tools that's our video tools available from adobe and then if you look yeah. at visual tools we've got spark post and spark page which again are our kind of our entry-level tools again elementary age as long as they're okay with the typing and things and the, and yeah, the, yeah. the use of language in it and and as long as you've you know your school has permission yeah. to use it and everything and and again free for education and then uh, above that it kind of branches out right yeah it, we talked yeah. about photoshop and illustrator and fresco which yeah. really are which really are three different tools right uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like a flow through them they're, they're yeah. different so how would you differentiate between those three so you're, I'll, I'll start with Photoshop. So I've, I've used Photoshop, probably one of the ones I've used, like the oldest, I think I, I don't even remember what the first version I had. So Photoshop is basically you're, you're manipulating photos. So you take a picture, you get your camera, you bring it in. And uh, depending on what type of like a digital camera you have and how you take your picture, you can, you can adjust the colors of your picture. They, they call it color grading it. And so you you can do that with a photo, but in addition to that, you kind of get artistic with the picture. Mm-hmm. So you can, you know, add filtering, you can, you can bring images in and kind of give, you know, kind of shadowy look to it. And, and um, sometimes that's where you get kind of those, um, I would say the creating those posters and mm-hmm. maybe like those movie posters and, you know, bringing kind of like that, if, you know, we just had Halloween a while back. So, you know, got those like ghoulish looking photos and kind of yeah. give that that filter look to it so it's a very high-end photo manipulation um yeah. you know that you, you can even do some 3d style for you know uh photos so that's kind of think of photoshop like that so 
you know, we would say Photoshop it, you know, put me in this picture, you know, I wasn't there, add me in the picture, right. you know, so we'll Photoshop, Photoshop yeah, you yeah. in. <laughs> 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 so that's kind of like the, the Photoshop. So Illustrator's kind of on, uh, you know, you got that, it's, it's uh, kind of line art, I would say, you know, uh, I would say I, for me, like I use a lot of that, like where I'm creating logos, mm-hmm. you know, kind of line art, you know, you know like a two color project or a three color project. And, you know, something that I may print on a t-shirt or mm. put on a business card and, you know, he- create a huge, you know, kind of like a, a line type poster that right. I print out. So, uh, you know, think of it as kind of you're illustrating, um, as opposed to on a photo, you just kind of looks realistic. So on a, on a illustrating kind of illustrating, I'm gonna maybe comic book, uh, yeah. if, you know, yeah. uh, if I can kind of think of it that way. I uh, can you know, kind of like pencil art, and so that's kind of where I see Illustrator. And, yeah, you know, um, it's it's kind of like for, for the educator who's not familiar with it. Maybe it's like Google Drawings on steroids, right? Like, so it, yeah, it's a two yeah. D drawing space with shapes and lines and things like yeah. that. But it, it's much above that. And I know a lot of uh, schools have adopted it as their tool for with like their laser cutters and vinyl cutters yeah, and things like yeah. that. So if you've got tools like that, it's great for those. Yeah, you, know, you got. I got a. Yeah, we got a cricket. We got a cricket a while back. So yeah, that's, great that's, for cricket. That's, that's like the stuff I'll, I'll make it on illustrator and uh, cut it out on. Yeah. 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 Now. So, so that's illustrator, but fresco really is the tool you use for illustrating ironically. Right. (laughs) Yeah. So I would say like you're illustrating, it's kind of your line art. And so fresco is kind of like the digital painting kind Mm -hmm. of, I think of it as, so if I were to have actual physical canvas and I have oil, oil colors or oil, you know, I think oil colors. Yeah. And in and, and pastels, your charcoal coloring. Well, fresco is kind of the digital version of that. Mm-hmm. So you have, if you have an Apple pencil, mm-hmm. you, you can, you know, pull out like, you can even say like, I want the paper to be like, like a canvas style paper, mm-hmm. or I want it to have kind of like a, uh, what's that? Uh, oh, uh, papyrus type of paper effect. So, and then I want the pencil to, I want, I want to use charcoal. So mm-hmm. then you, you can draw char- charcoal art using fresco and you can kind of do oil painting with a digital fresco. So basically you're, you're creating basically that you're, 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 digital you're painting, art, yeah. you know, you're doing painting. So that's fresco. And, and, um, and again, they just, they just added it to the mobile device or you can, you can use it like on an iPhone. So they've had it on the, on the iPad for a while. And so um, it's pretty slick. It's pretty neat. I'm, I'm not a great painter. My daughter does it. So, I, I, it's really impressive, and yes, yeah. I wish I wish I had more time to dive into like those. And just like I'm going to stick to what I'm good at. <laughs> right, no, if you've got enough things, Claudio. You don't need another one. Um, so, fre- so fresco, fresco would be like your sketch noting tool, but on I mean, like way above the level of what you yeah. normally do in like sketch note. Because, yeah. like, like you said, you can go in there and mimic certain kinds of uh, media and and things like that, like, like you really would in an art class. So, really yeah. cool tool there. Definitely. What about um, so fresco? You said is mobile or tablet? Mm-hmm. Illustrator was desktop first, and now it's got an iOS yeah, version available. Yeah. Um, spark post and spark page work, work across uh, most devices. Yes. Um, and then Photoshop is windows Photoshop and Mac windows, windows, and Mac, and now iPad too. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty, it's really, really neat. So they're, they're still releasing some of the more features into it. So it's kind of been in stages, yeah. you know, like the, the full version, but I could open up a Photoshop product that I've started on a computer and open it up in there and vice versa which is pretty, pretty slick, you know, take a picture on the iPad and then I can manipulate it there. So it's really cool. Yeah. I can, I can shave off, uh, I can shave off some weight <laughs> on <laughs> using Photoshop. <You're> right. <laughs> <laughs> And then the uh, so then the final little category of tools I've got here that I put in the show notes was was audio tools. Yeah, um, and you and you said audition and, and it's, so I've never used audition before. Is that um, is it pretty similar to something like a Garage Band or something like that would be? Yeah, so I would I would I would actually almost yeah I say I would a little a little more a li- like Garage Band on steroids. I say okay. I, I guess the equal I guess would be. So garage band is, you know, the music kind of a music production, you know, garage band, like, you know, I got a garage band. Right. Um, so yeah, with, with, so with audition, uh, I'll use it. Like I'll, I'll, I'll maybe record a little something that I play on the drums here and drop it in and tweak this. They got some effects there and I'll play with it. And I use it a lot for narration and kind of some of my, um, I, I'll edit some music tracks that I use for like my videos, 
uh, one of the cool things. And this is one of those things that I learned about that saved me hours was um, like, if, if I, if I do a YouTube video, that's about six minutes and six and a half minutes long. Well, some songs aren't six and a half minutes long. Mm-hmm. So if I find a, you know, um, I subscribe to like a music uh, kind of provider type thing. So, you know, if I pick a song that's three and a half, well, I used to have to like copy paste the song in premiere pro and then tweet, you know, like adjust it. I well, find a spot to loop yeah. it or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. To loop it. Well, with addition to say, well, I want this song to be instead of three and a half minutes to be six and a half minutes long. And there's these little dials and little sliders. You, you know, how much do you want it to like, do you want more of the chorus or this? It kind of, it, it wow. uses uh, Adobe wow. has this thing called Adobe has this artificial intelligence mm-hmm. thing called Adobe sensei, which is used on all across all their, all their uh, products, which is kind of like their in- artificial intelligence. So it, it'll, it'll take this three and a half minute long song. And based on what you settings, you tell it, it'll p- put it out to six and a half minutes and it, it doesn't, re- it doesn't repeat. Mm-hmm. And so my, the, the, my friend has shown me that I was like, wow. you just saved me. Yeah. Two hours of editing every time on my video. Yeah. You know, I was being like exaggerating, but I was like, yeah, I don't know. Kind of time. Right. And he showed me like here, he pulled in, I forget what song. He just pulled in like, I think it was a Beatles song. And he goes, Let's this song is this long. Let's make it 10 minutes, you know, wow. this 10 minutes long. And it basically pulled chorus, the chorus verses and kind of rearranged it. And I was like, basically the same song. And it's just wow. and it it didn't sound weird. It's yeah. Like, is if is it's as if they actually had recorded for ten minutes instead yeah. of like six minutes. I was like, wow, that's yeah. so. It's great for podcasting too. So yeah, right. yeah. You know, podcasting and um, you know, uh, back using a uh, kind of like uh, sound effects that you can drop into like Premiere Pro. So yeah, that's kind of like the 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 uh, I would say the, the audio tool. I'll, um, that's kind of what I'll use for when I do some of my video editing. So that's. Mm-hmm. And again, you know, podcasting, uh, and we didn't, we didn't even mention podcasting because that's something definitely another way for students. Sure. To yeah. Them, so that's a great way for kind of like getting into podcasting and, um, and with all those tools. So if you're, I know there's, there's some districts that do have like creative cloud accounts that students use kind of like in the high schools programs, kind of like your CTE programs, they'll, they'll use, uh, they get licensed, uh, just there's different types of license. I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm a little, it's a uh, memory wise. I don't remember how it's structured, but that's say, not the fun stuff to talk about. Anyhow, yeah, you have to they, this stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. And then they, so basically gives students at the campus access to all the products. And then when they go home, they can log in with their account and still like use all those products at home um, if they, on, on their own computer. And which is, which is pretty cool. Oh um, yeah. Yeah. And most of these have like trial versions and things like that available yeah, where yeah. you could, you could see like, are, are the yeah. kids into it? It's just working out in my classes before yeah. you, you know, pull out the checkbook. Right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think it's like a third, most of them have like a 30 day, mm-hmm. uh, 30 day little trial. So, wow, oh yeah, cool. definitely. Yeah. Well, Claudio, this has been amazing. You've shared so much cool stuff. I normally I, I'll tell a guest like you could sh- like, so I'll ask you a question. You don't have to just give one thing. You can give a couple and Claudio, you gave me one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different things, and and a pocket full of creativity, Claudio. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Right? This is some awesome, awesome stuff, and I love this idea. I love how you're you, you took this question that was how can I hear from all of my students, and you really like you added so many different layers into that. Not only are we hearing from them, we're bringing in all this, this passion, this excitement, these real world skills, these four C's, this creativity, things that kids are just going to go, go nuts for. And uh, although you shared nine tools, I mean, there are dozens of other tools there. I think, I think the overarching point of what you shared is to give kids choice and give them an opportunity to to create, to create. Right. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah. All right, man. Well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. Hey, well, thanks for having me on. This this was great. Enjoyed it. Ah, I'm so psyched to have had Claudio on the show. I hope that you guys enjoyed all of that wisdom and our little chat there. Uh, links to uh, his social media and his website and his page where he lists his kit of all of his hardware he uses, which is an awesome list. It's a, a lot of stuff that I can't afford to go out and buy, but it's cool looking at it. Uh, anyhow, all of that stuff is in the show notes. You should totally go check it out and check out the work that he is doing. He really does some amazing, amazing stuff. Um, 
I, I've, I've decided lately in, in the show that I think a nice kind of closing thing here is for me to help you review what you learned here. Um, you might want to do like a brain dump on your own, but for me to just kind of tie a nice, neat bow on it, we talked about three different video tools from Adobe. The first one being the free and easiest to use one, which is Spark Video. The step up from that is Premiere Rush. And then the third step was Premiere Pro. So those are the three different video tools from Adobe that we talked about and i've got some notes in the show notes about which you know which ones work on what platforms what's free what's not free and stuff like that then if you're looking to make a two-dimensional graphic of some sort uh, a visual tool so to speak or an infographic or a picture or a drawing or something like that we talked about a handful of tools first again the free and easier to use spark tools are spark post and spark page and then we talked about photoshop for manipulating pictures or Illustrator for making animations and illustrations, or Fresco for making actual digital drawings. And then finally, we heard about Adobe Audition for audio creations. And again, uh, some notes about each of those are in the show notes. And if you have questions about them, Claudio's contact information is is in the show notes. You should totally reach out to him and follow him and hear some of his wisdom about each of those tools. Last, but certainly not least, is time for my favorite part of the show, which is the celebration of the adjacent possible. Actually, it's not last, because after that, I'm going to give you guys a homework assignment, so be ready for the homework assignment. But anyhow, before that, the adjacent possible is the idea that whatever you do, whatever you try, whoever you talk to, whatever podcast you listen to, whoever you listen to, wherever you go, opens you up to new adjacent possibilities. And the connections and discussions between me and you, and you and each other, between duct tapers, between educators, those open up our adjacent possibilities. So the celebration of the adjacent possible is my time to connect with you and hear from you and either hear insights from you or answer questions from you or hear feedback from you so that we can connect and open up those adjacent possibilities. Today, we're going to expand our adjacent possible with two questions. And Siri is here to help me with these. Siri, are you ready? I think she's ready. Actually, Siri is going to be a boy today because it's boy question. So I've switched Siri to a boy voice. <laughs> First up, we've got Tristan Toll. And Tristan, I hope I'm pronouncing your last name right. He is at Tristan, T-R-I-S-T-A-N, Toll, T-O-L-L-E. Uh, and Tristan asked, well, actually, Siri, what did Tristan ask? What asynchronous activities, apps, websites would you suggest for elementary teachers to use for an inclement weather day folder? Boy, Tristan, you sound kind of like a robot. <laughs> a little bit awkward there, Siri. That was an awkward Siri voice. I, I'm going to have to try, try a different one next time. Uh, Tristan, lots of different asynchronous apps, apps, activities, and websites um, can be used for elementary kiddos on those surprise uh, days at home, maybe when teachers don't have time to plan stuff. I think that's the, the operable part here is it's not just a good digital tool for teachers to plan a really engaging lesson in. It's something that maybe doesn't require any teacher prep. So I'm going to think about some things like that where maybe you can just really quickly or maybe just have these things ready to go for when this ever happens, which I think is kind of the idea between a uh, inclement weather day folder, which is, you know, snow, a sudden snow day. Here's a folder of work for the kids who work on at home so they don't have, you know, no school. So a couple things off the top of my head. Um, I am a huge fan of Wonderopolis myself and my, my fourth grade daughter Parker we're looking at Wonderopolis recently um so Wonderopolis, they, they answer a wonder of the day every day. So they, people submit things that they wonder. Wonderopolis does a deep dive from a lot of different perspectives into answering that question. And then there's a database of all of them in there. Lots of fun exploring and learning and wondering that can happen in Wonderopolis. Uh, Wonderopolis actually is part of the Flipgrid Disco- Discovery Library, uh, which is a location in Flipgrid where they have curated a whole collection of ready-made Flipgrid topics, uh, with tons of different prompts from tons of sources, including Wonderopolis, as well as Minecraft, uh, The Met, Discovery Education. Uh, I know Epic Books is in there. Lego's in there. there. There's there's dozens of different things in there. So you can maybe have those flip grids ready to go in advance. Um, I am a huge fan of computer science stuff that kids can work on independently at their own speed. Code.org has a great collection of them. Hourofcode.com. Um, 
kind of collaborates with code.org, but there's a great collection of free stuff there where you're sure it's all free. Uh, I'm a huge fan of using Scratch, but you'd want to maybe have a resource to teach them how to use Scratch. Um, speaking of, of computer science, uh, back in season one of the show, Carly Mora was on and gave lots of ideas for computer science in elementary school. And she shared about a site called CS, as in computer science, in sf as in san francisco.com cs as cs in sf.com a whole curriculum of ideas there that you could look into Um, also google offers the applied digital skills curriculum uh, and most of that is focused on you know high school and college age or you know upper middle class middle grade um, students but there are some upper elementary activities in there i'll put a link to them in the show notes Um, so that's a good place where the the um Google leads them through the activity. So maybe you wouldn't need to be as the teacher, you know, prepping a lesson plan to go with it. Um, I don't know. PBS Kids has some great stuff on their site. National Geographic uh, Kids has great stuff. Discovery Education Kids. I don't know if it's called Kids, but it has great stuff on the site. Google Arts and, Arts and Culture is always a great option. Um, there's some stuff in there that maybe is not kid appropriate. You know, it, it is art and it is culture. Um, but there are certain areas in there that maybe you can link to for kids to explore museums and things like that. Um, virtual field trips would be fantastic. Uh, if you go back to the very first regular episode of this show, it was like technically the second episode episode in the feed, um, but my first guest was guest was my friend Ann Radefeld, and she shared a bunch of virtual field trip activities. There's some activities in there. Um, a lot of schools have been using Prodigy and Dreambox for math. I'm not a huge fan of either. Um, my kids love Prodigy because I think it's fun. I don't think it's quite mathy enough, but heck, if it gets kids excited about something, it's a learning thing. I guess it's okay. Um, Dreambox, I was not impressed with when I messed with it, but uh, I do have some math friends who love it and swear by it. So uh, there's that. Um, just please, please, please not cool math games. My goodness. They are cool. They are games, but they're very rarely math. <laughs> please, no. And I, there's another one that's similar to it. I forget what it is. No, not those. Try it first, whatever it is, before you ask kids to do it, because you, the parents are going to look at you like you're a joke if you send the stuff, stuff like that home. Um, I would love to hear, I, I could probably go on and on, but, and some of the elementary educators out there are shouting things at their phone right now. What other ideas do you have? If you have other ideas, uh, I will put the link to Tristan's tweet where he asked me this question question in the show notes you can click on it and you could respond to them or you could send me a message with some responses and maybe i'll air it in the next episode and uh, we'll hear some of your uh, elaborations on tristan's question Oh, and by the way, it doesn't have to be just technology. If you can make sure that before that any day your students go home with a book in their book bag, they could just read books, right? Books are wonderful. And drawing things. If kids have paper, they could draw things and build things and take pictures of them with the webcam on their device. Or... Uh, any of these tools involves you know, a certain level of exploration, right? Most of them do. What if the kids just l- pick something to learn about, something new that they're excited about, and then report out it on a Flipgrid? A whole class has a Flipgrid, and everybody records a, a video in the afternoon and says, this is what I learned about, and kind of presents it to their class. I could see kids being super duper excited about that. Okay, one more question, then we'll wrap up the show. Here's Ryan Canton at The Swish, which, Ryan, how did you get the username The Swish? How did J.R. Smith not beat you to that? Uh, Anyhow, here's Ryan Canton with a question he asked me on Twitter recently. Ryan, I'm going to try out a new Siri voice for you. You get the Fred voice. You ready for the Fred voice? I think it's a downgrade from Tristan. So let's see what you guys think of it. On a list of email addresses, SS that submitted a form. On the second list, main, all SS email addresses. What's the easiest way to compare the two to isolate highlight SS on the main list to see who hasn't submitted yet? <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll be reusing that Siri voice in the future. We tried Fred once. Fred is not coming back on the show. Fred, you're fired. <laughs> Siri Fred. Uh, so Ryan's question is, he's he's got a spreadsheet. I've got to reread it for Fred because he was so hard to hear there. Um, so 
Ryan's got a spreadsheet. In his spreadsheet, he's got a list of email addresses because people have submitted a form and that generated that list. And he wants to know who hasn't responded. So he's got this other list of everybody. And he's like, how do I compare this list of everybody to the list of the people who've responded and find out what 10 people I need to go yell at because they haven't responded? I hope you're not going to yell at him, Ryan, but that's essentially what Ryan wants to do. So Ryan, I actually had this question in relation to the show myself uh, about a year ago when I used to list all of the new uh, hashtag edu duct tape tweeters each week, uh, each episode. I would take a list of everybody who had tweeted previously, and then I would take a list of everybody who tweeted that week, and then I would need a process to tell me who the new ones were in that list, right? So I had to use some formulas to make that happen for me. And at first, I actually used an add-on, and that add-on was called Remove Duplicates, and it was from a company called AbleBits. Able, A-B-L-E, bits, B-I-T-S. Uh, and it's in the Google Sheets uh, add-on list in there. And I stopped using it. And I don't know why I stopped using it. But I think it was because they were trying to charge me after a certain number of uses. That's my guess. So I stopped. For whatever reason, I stopped using it. I don't, I don't remember why. Uh, and I think that's probably what it was. And I was trying to figure out what I should do. And I remember that Jen Giffen and I actually talked about it, I think. And Jen and I ended up figuring out a formula, or maybe Jen, I don't know, but Jen Giffen was somehow involved in me figuring out this formula. And I'm going to put the formula in the show notes, and I'm going to put an example in the show notes for you, Ryan, and for anybody else. But you're going to use a filter formula and two separate little um, operators you're going to use in that formula. One is ISNA. In other words, is not a, I, I assume is what it stands for. And the other f- operator you need in there is match. So by combining those two things, you're looking for things that are a match. And then you're putting fr- in front of that is not a, so you're saying something that is not a match. So you're filtering a list for things that are is not that are not a match of things from the other list. And so I've written out the actual formula in the show notes. I, it would be riveting a podcast audio if i read you to, to you the formula right now maybe i should have a siri fred read it to you um <laughs> but it's in the show notes for you to check out uh, and there's also an example linked in there essentially you say look at uh this list give me the things from this list that are not in that list and it gives you a list of what's kind of left over between them and the three uh formulas you need in there are filter is an a and match. And there's a there's an example, like I said, in the show notes that you guys can check out. There are probably other ways to do it out there. That way worked well for me. Uh, and again, that that add-on did work well, but something made me stop it, and I think it was pricing. Um, if you guys have other ones that you would suggest to do for this process, I'm all ears. And if you'd like to respond to Tristan or Ryan's questions and uh, elaborate on my answers and give some other answers and insights from your perspective, the links to both of their tweets are in the show notes. You can go there and respond directly to them. And then if I see that tweet there, so you might need to tag me to make sure I do. I might even then include your additional answers in a future episode if I think it'll benefit everybody else. And if you've got a question, you could tweet it to me at Jake Miller Tech. Email it to me, jakemillertech at gmail.com, or submit it on the show's Flipgrid, which is at flipgrid.com slash edu duct tape. It could be a text question, and you'll hear Siri butcher it for you, or if it's an audio or video file, I'll even put your voice right in the episode. So that does it for today's episode. One last thing. I'm the teacher. The bell is ringing right now, and before my students get up and run out of the room, I'm telling them I don't... The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. I have homework to tell you guys about. So I have homework to tell you guys about today. Your homework is... I want you to tell one person who loves tacos about this podcast. (laughs) So find an educator who you know loves tacos and tell them about this podcast. Bonus points if you tag me on Twitter or Instagram or wherever and tell me who you told about it. So find an educator who you think should listen to this show and likes tacos and tell them about this podcast. Why? I don't know, because I think it'll be fun. I'm not going to give them tacos. Please don't promise them tacos from me. You could promise them tacos from you if you want to. But you, I need you, your homework, and I will be grading this in the next episode, find a friend who is an educator who likes tacos and tell them about this podcast. (laughs) Okay, that really does do it for today's episode. If you enjoyed what you heard, please tell a friend, tell a colleague that's more of an acquaintance than a friend, or share about it with a hashtag edu duct tape on social media. And if you really liked it, 
please consider rating the show on Apple Podcasts. Check the show notes for details about signing up for my newsletter, joining the Duct Tapers Facebook group, inquiring about having me work with you or your team of educators, getting some podcast stickers, and more. As always, as a parent, I'm grateful for the work you do. And as an educator, I'm proud of your dedication to lifelong learning. I will see you guys in a fortnight. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to the Educational Duct Tape Podcast. Please visit eduducttape.com to join the discussion, share possible topics, inquire about being a guest, or contact Jake. And remember, duct is spelled with a T, not a quack quack cake.